At Kelly Field, Texas, young pilots by the hundreds are learning fundamentals in training ships like these. Speeding off the runways, Uncle Sam's newest flyers roar into the skies to let the world know America is getting ready. But this is just the beginning. They have to be good when they get behind the controls of these 400 mile an hour fighting ships. What a sight. Yes, sir, they're thrilling to watch, but you'd better keep out of their way when they get mad and mean business. Guns and more guns are the demand of Army and Navy chieftains today as America pushes the greatest preparedness effort in all its history. Big enough for a man to crawl into, and mightiest weapon of them all is this 16-inch gun that arms our greatest battleships and our coast artillery. No watchmaker uses more delicate care than the expert craftsmen who smooth these monsters to exact precision. Skilled workmen like these, in plants from coast to coast, are working around the clock to make the United States the arsenal of democracy. Tom, Dick, and Harry are in the Army now, but they are not the only ones who are giving every effort to defend America. President Roosevelt is at his desk night and day, calling on the nation to sacrifice in the common interest. He sets an example with long hours of overtime. No time for relaxation for England's monarch either. Working tirelessly for his people's welfare, King George well maintains tradition, the crown as symbol of British unity. Block after block of houses and business structures are left in ruins after the mass bombings of German planes. But the people of the stricken cities carry on, clearing away the rubble where only a few hours before their homes had stood. They get ready for another day. This destruction was caused by area bombing, the raining of explosives upon whole sections of the city rather than directly at specific objectives. And the Iron Man himself, Winston Churchill, Seeming never to wear down, he is the dynamo behind the spectacular resistance of his country to attacks which experts thought irresistible. Back of the chalk cliffs of Dover, soldiers and civilians alike are proving day after day that the British bulldog is a rugged foe. Scores of Nazi bombers escorted by fighting ships swoop daily to the attack. The Royal Air Force speeds aloft to drive back the invaders. A dogfight. It's every man for himself, and the ground artillery takes the hindmost as anti-aircraft guns bark their defiance. Two mighty nations are gripped in a fight to the finish. Barrage balloons are attacked. Ripped by incendiary bullets, they plummet to earth a mass of flaming hydrogen. Direct hits are made. Sometimes parachutes are set ablaze by the flaming planes. Battered by the defender's fire, a Nazi plane crashes into the sea. Floating behind under his parachute, the pilot drops into the water. In the battle for Britain, airways are the death ways. wagons belch destruction from the Baltic to the Mediterranean as the Great War becomes daily more critical. Ton after ton of steel batters against shore targets, shattering troop concentrations, artillery and supply dumps. This ingenious new invention employs hot water poured in a knife handle. Sloppy chap, what? Oh, it heats up this butter knife for spreading butter in the winter. For summer picnics, the handle can be stuffed with anchovies. For the more fastidious, knives with holes in them for eating peas. Each pea has its own resting place, which reduces the hazard of it rolling into your breast pocket. And look here! Peas threaded on cotton for the timid or knife shy. Can't cut the kisser. For the golfer, air-conditioned shoes with an exhaust pipe in the rear. The toots for... Here's a time saver. While it waves goodbye to your wife as she leaves by the rear, you and the <coughs> lady friend can be halfway out the front door with another invention for thrifty crackpots. Half an umbrella for those who haven't sensed to come in out of the rain. Clever what? <laughs> 
Confucius says bathing beauties are like prescriptions. They're only good when filled. It's a camera fan contest at Long Beach. Mighty pretty territory for exposures, eh, what? Oh, what double feature is he taking, eh? Oh, the first one. Say, her face is familiar. She looks like, uh, now let me... Oh, who let that ostrich in? It's a double contest. The prize picture and the prize beauty. My, oh, my. Oh, that's her again. You know, she's got more, uh... Well, look, that poor fellow must have put his film in upside down. What can he see from there? That's her. She wins. By Jove, certainly anybody can see that she's got, uh, well, uh, I mean, even from here, uh, any kind of person could tell that, uh... Oh, go develop your negative, boys. It's all over. By Jove, she's a road hazard. Dangerous curves and soft shoulders. Parade of Champions. Here come the Reds, baseball champions of the world. Under the critical eye of wizard Bill McKechnie, they're ready to drive for their third league title in a row and their second World Series. Champion Joe Lewis trains intensively for his coming title bout. Joe learned from Max Schmeling that a fighter can't be slipshod. The Brown Bomber now puts into every fight the extra effort that sent him to the top. Willie Hoppy, the greatest name in billiards. Not even illness could keep him from being king again. Look at the easy sureness of that shot. No wonder billiard fans pack the hall when Hoppy comes to town. And here's an all-time champion who has earned the right to take life easy, the one and only Seabiscuit. Fans of present and future will have a reminder of him in eternal bronze, and it's fitting that they should. For here is the horse who won more prize money than any other great horse ever won before him, a real champion. <laughs> Calling him and calling him right is serious business with Beans Reardon. He girds himself with plenty of protection so he can get right in there close and watch him as they break across the plate. Like all umpires, he calls him as he sees him. And right or wrong, his decision always stands. Sometimes we don't agree with his decision, but once the ump calls him, that's it. Bill Clem, the old arbitrator of the National League, finds a dusty plate. But there's no dust on him when it comes to making quick decisions in a fashion which characterizes National League efficiency. Watch Bill Clem work behind the plate and get the full import of finality when he calls him. Here's a fast one, strike, and that's that. Here's a close one at first, he's out. Now for a cutoff play at second. When they're close, they're exciting, but it's always tough for the runner to take when the ump calls him out on a close one. But the ump's decision is always final, and he's out. Here's Guy Bush, one of baseball's immortals. Guy's customer is none other than Red Ormsby, famous American League umpire. Hello, Red. Looks Hi, like, Guy. Looks like you've been down in old Sunny South. That's right. Florida's got that sun, sun lamp beat every time. Red, I want to introduce you to my service man, Mr. John Long. John, how are you? Glad to meet you. Glad to meet you, Mr. Ormsby. Thanks, John. Will you fill it up, please? Yes, sir. I thought I was getting away from Coach City and umpires when I got in this business. I don't get you, guy. What do you mean? See, I'm surrounded by umpires here, and I have to watch my step very close every day to keep Coach City and being called on me. Well, who's calling those close decisions on you now? My customers, and I, then they call them as they see them, too. Oh, I didn't look at it that way. Well, this business is pretty much like baseball. The fellows that circle the bases are the ones that remember the fundamentals. And they're the boys that put in a little extra effort, too. You know how it is, the ordinary guy can hit and run and do a good job of field, but he's still average. The thing that makes a top player tops is hitting a little harder, running the base a little smarter, and putting a little extra effort in his fielding, you see? Good dealers operate that way, too. It's this way, Red, for any dealers. The fundamentals are appearance, cleanliness, and service. But plus appearance, plus cleanliness, and plus service brings in the scores and avoids close decisions. You've got something there, Guy. Hit a homer every time with plus service that the ordinary station doesn't give. That's it, Red. Well, I've got a roll, Guy. So long. Keep pitching, boy. So long, Red. You need your wits about you when it comes to putting pepper the old pepper game. But it's fun if you can take it.
Never a dull moment in this game. Things are always coming your way and coming all of a sudden. Arthur Paulson, standard dealer at Bismarck, North Dakota, runs a pepper game all his own. Art believes in signs. Even though he's not superstitious, he pinned his faith on this one, and it worked. Talk about putting yourself on the spot. That's just what this one does. But dealer Paulson and his wide awake servicemen back it up and make good their boast. Sudden service, in neon, invites customers in, and the same message on the back of their uniforms carries out the challenge. Extra service to every customer, and it's sudden. That's what makes it click. And get this, in one year, he turned a 25,000 gallon loss into a 65,000 gallon gain. And here's Tom Harmon. Remember last fall how this sensational captain of the All-Americans gave rival football squads from coast to coast plenty to be sorry about? And no wonder, speed like old 98s is something to reckon with. There he goes. And he's over for a touchdown. Speed and the name Harmon are linked again. Jack Harmon, standard dealer in Springfield, Illinois, makes Speed his chief stock in trade. He and his able crew made their service station drive into a speedway. And rain or shine, it's always a fast track. Jack says speed counts in getting to each customer, but it's just as profitable in rendering service also. Here at Harmon's, you get all the usual services, plus two more, and you'll like it better because you get it fast. How'd you like to double your business? Speed and extra service did it for Harmon. Dress parade is always an event at Uncle Sam's Naval Academy. These future naval officers take a back seat from no one. Pride in themselves and pride in their country brings out the best in these men who will one day guide the destiny of our great naval fleet. Each one erect and alert with an attitude that radiates confidence, they are gallantly arrayed in the uniforms of their profession, which mark them as members of the greatest, most efficient sea force in history. Truly and with feeling we can say, proudly we hail. These men in uniform give daily thrills to Mr. and Mrs. Motorist as they parade through the driveway at Niles, Michigan. Burke Posthumus and his servicemen run our midshipmen a close race when it comes to attitude and alertness. You've got to look the part and act it too if you really want to impress your customer. That's Burke's story and that suits him. Why not? 58% increase in one year flat resulted from tossing that hang dog attitude into the junk pile. Burke says, look alive and you'll stay alive longer. <laughs> Mark Chong with the Times, presenting the birth of the community. There's going to be a great day. With that prayer in their hearts, a band of determined men gathered in Philadelphia on July 4th, 1776, to sign the Declaration of Independence, brought together by a common cause, all imbued with one unquenchable belief and a single unswerving purpose. Today, our nation's capital at Washington majestically confirms the belief of our forefathers. In unity, there is strength. In these days of worldwide strife, this stately dome stands as eternal inspiration to us all to perpetuate the mightiest community on Earth, our own United States. A thousand miles from our capital, at St. Paul, Minnesota, this great community unites for its annual ice festival. Ten days of frolic, dedicated to King Winter. 6,200 tons of ice blocks went to build this magnificent palace. The newly crowned king is escorted by his guard of honor as he emerges from the castle for the opening day parade. Banded together in a common cause from all walks of life, St. Paul puts on a winter show which has assumed legendary proportions. At Chicago's Tournament of Champions, the bell signals a grand army of hopefuls to fight their way to stardom. Each one of these boys, groomed and sponsored by his local backers, finds the going tough in this annual quest for the Golden Gloves. Here. Joe Lewis, Barney Ross, and other champs won their laurels. Faced with their last chance of fame and fortune, this truly is the moment when these now lonely Spartans need and lean upon the inspiration of all who united their cheers to start them on their way up. 
Mighty warriors of the gridiron battle for supremacy. These Green Bay Packers look tough, act tough, and are tough to beat. This great team has made a name in professional football. That's the envy of its opponents throughout the country. The only professional team that ever has won five national championships. Every man, woman, and child in Green Bay justifiably worships this team. And all roads lead to Green Bay on game day. Community spirit has encouraged these boys and kept them among the leaders. Teamwork among the citizens has inspired and kept alive teamwork among the players. At Cheyenne, Wyoming, town folks, ranchers, and Indians pool their toil and talents to revive the spirit of the pioneer era. Those years when men had to band together to survive. This annual Frontier Day celebration is a magnet to thrill seekers from hundreds of miles around. Community effort makes the annual corn husking contest of Scott County, Iowa, a national event to agricultural athletes. A new world record is set for the winner, Little Oscar of Iowa. Each year, the Tulip Festival here at Holland, Michigan, lures legions of visitors. It's indeed a never to be forgotten pleasure to visit and join in this pilgrimage. The unrivaled beauty and quaint customs and costumes create a simple grandeur well worth experiencing. Businessmen, professional men, housewives and children, the whole township participates. In fact, only the combined activity of this community as a whole could make of this festival the mammoth attraction it's grown to be. Another great tribute to the philosophy of community endeavor. Throughout our land, everywhere we've been tonight, we found undeniable proof of the strength and permanence of unity. When men band together in the common cause, great force is generated. Irresistible power is released, and through such group effort, even the least of us is made strong. Time marches along. Today in the Windy City, Standard Oil Company has just made public announcement of the greatest prize campaign in its history. Even as Standard dealers were gathering for their meetings in 300 towns and cities, reporters were hurrying away to their papers with details of Standard's 1941 Pride of the Community campaign. $50,000 in prizes to be awarded to Standard dealers and their servicemen. Throughout Standard's territory lies the reason for this brand new project. Standard stations that are giving service every day in cities, towns, hamlets, and on highways. Separately, as individual units, they're serving their own neighborhoods. But imagine, if you will, the spectacle they would present if all of the 23,000 standard stations in the Middle West were brought together in one mammoth group. They'd form a veritable city as large as a metropolitan center with 23,000 buildings. What a mighty community. Standard dealers are a community. The very fact that they're joining their fellow dealers today in meetings in 300 towns and cities is proof that they recognize their common needs, recognize that they are members of the standard community. And that is the key to the $50,000 prize contest announced today, to encourage teamwork among standard dealers. Take Bucky Walters, one of today's greatest hurlers. He has control and speed galore. But what would have happened in the 1940 World Series at Cincinnati if Bucky were on the mound with no other players on the field? Why, they'd knocked him all over the lot. Not a Chinaman's chance for a win. As good as he is, he needs teammates. Every dealer and serviceman in this contest will be on a team with the men from every other station in his community. But remember, one game doesn't make the season. And spending one evening together won't put your team out in front. It's banding together and pulling together during the full playing season that brings crowds all summer. There's no doubt about it, it pays better to play on a winning team. Bucky made more money with the Cincinnati Reds last year than he could have made with the Phillies. Not that the Phillies can't play good ball, but they're not a winning team. And only the players on the winning teams collect the extra payoff. And here's the extra payoff for you. We're just in time for the curtain. $50,000 in prizes for dealers and their servicemen who win in standards pride of the community campaign. On with the show. And here's your program. All kinds of prizes, valuable prizes. Papa might want these field glasses. Mama might like this new silver set. This movie projector would strike Sonny just swell. But sister would be thrilled with this wardrobe case. Baby's eyes would sparkle with this streamlined tricycle. 
radios, electric shavers, tool kits, gardening sets, blankets, electric mixers, fishing tackle, everything from women's silks to rifles. The campaign officially starts June 1st, but the spring training season is on right now. Get ready, here it comes, right down the groove. Here's hoping you knock it out of the lot. 